Uh, hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube uh, channel. Today I have an extremely special guest uh, with me. Uh, his name is Joseph Kim and welcome Joseph to my channel. Over to you for a small introduction about yourself. Thanks Nikhil, uh, happy to be here. So a quick introduction about uh, me is I'm I'm an old guy who's been in the game as, games industry for a long time, but I've had like a pretty long career starting in like software development and then like uh, management consulting and uh, started in the games industry right around 2010. Um, how, how long do you want this intro? I mean, I, I could do a longer, right, let me just do the short version because uh, I don't want to bore anybody. So really short version, started in 2010, making games for Facebook, MySpace during the early days when it was super easy, uh, then shifted to to try and start a mobile gaming startup in San Francisco in 2010, 2011. Uh, it was an amazing, absolutely great time, but I was just inexperienced at that time. So I made a lot of mistakes. From there, I shifted to working with large Asian publishers like Ren Ren Games from China, Smallgate from Korea, helping them uh, launch mobile games in the US. And then that just really got me to learn more about mobile gaming, free to play, things like that. And from there, I then joined a company called Fun Plus. And I think that's where there's a lot more intersections and in, in just kind of like, you, you know, influence on what I'm doing today. So at Fun Plus, we had a model that I now called a lead space model where, you know, this was during the time when, when I worked at Fun Plus, probably like 2015 or so when China was not as dominant as, as it is today in mobile and gaming. And so I, I wound up leading a game called King of Avalon uh, at Fun Plus and with a team in Beijing primarily. Now we had we had other folks in, in other parts of the world, but basically I learned uh, a model that I now call a lead space model, but that was basically set up by the CEO of Fun Plus, Andy Zong, at that time, where we had a local team, but then we would hire these global leads that would help train the team in Beijing and help them get better. And kind of like the idea was, even if you have like a C, C minus team, but you have A plus or great leads that the 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 overall talent of the team is dramatically elevated to like A minus B plus, and eventually that local team, I mean, you know, Fun Plus today is a number one publisher in Forex. King of Avalon became a huge success, making, you know, over a billion dollars life of product revenue, as well as all of the reskins, a State of Survival, Guns of Glory, you know, all, all of those games. And so that's kind of what I'm trying to do today. I'm trying to basically, um, you know, try to develop the expertise of our team in Bangalore. Our, you know, right now I'm in Silicon Valley, but I spend most of my time in India and I go back and forth. But what we want to do is we want to try and you do that same model, a global leads based model where we get a few leads and try to dramatically raise the, the capability of, of our team in India so that we can eventually become a world-class team very similar to Fun Plus. Awesome, awesome. And uh, now that you mentioned about uh, the Indian counterpart, uh, what brings you to India and what sort of uh, talent do you see over here and what is majorly the difference that basically pulls you towards India and not anywhere in the rest of the world? Yeah, well, I mean, it, it kind of started with a desire to try to create a different kind of company. So, you know, I, I was at Fun Plus, but after Fun Plus, I joined Sega as a uh, you know chief product officer there for for mobile gaming, and then also I was at NBC Universal as SVP of um, you know digital platforms and games, kind of overseeing game publishing. And so one of, one of the things I really wanted to do was to build a company that operated a little bit differently. So when when I was working in publishing, I got to meet with studios all around the world, work with them pretty closely, and I just thought, man, I don't think. These studios, I mean, there there are certain things that I would do differently and where I felt like there could be a lot of operational efficiencies and ways of operating that I think could be better. And on top of that, I just felt that there were a lot of things I think that were not really related to talent, but that were holding companies back related more around culture, politics, things of that nature. And so, you know, I just had a desire to try to do something more meaningful with my life. As, as an old guy, you know, look, I could just work for another company. I can make a ton of money or I could try to do something meaningful in my life before I die. And so kind of like the desire is, can we build a company that operates more efficiently, more effectively? And can I do something meaningful in my life? Meaning in terms of the, the India aspect, can we, can we create a company that provides opportunities for people and gives people an opportunity to dramatically change their lives. And, and so that, that was the motivation behind India. There's, there's more behind that. 
you know, people think it's just about cost structure, things like that. No, nah, it, it, that's part of it. Sure. Like, like, you know, one of the things that I did when, when thinking about building a company was blank slate, if you were going to build a company with long-term structural advantage, how do you build a company that has so that has a lot of massive built-in competitive advantage? Now building in India, I do think if I'm being really honest is a little bit early, right? Like in terms of, you know, that the kinds of capabilities and things like that relative to a global stage. But I do think that if you're if you're able to invest in India over the long term, you could build a company with dramatic with dramatically significant structural advantage for the future. And so that's kind of like the vision that we had. And what we're trying to do is to build a company, because when you think about it, like right now, if you look at the long term trends in the industry, like China's just dominating, right? You look at companies like Hoyoverse, you know, and other companies in China, like Lilith and, and companies like that, like they are just building not, and it's, again, it's not just cost structure advantage. It's like capabilities, uh, you know, and, and it's it's like know-how that's being built in those centers of excellence, um, or in, in a few centers of excellence around the world, whether you look at China or Turkey, and when I looked at, when, when I thought about like geopolitical challenges, when I thought about the future, when I think about all the growth happening in India, I mean, because I think the way to think about India is in two parts. First is the game development ecosystem, which is early and which I think can become, you know, significant, uh, a significant world power in the future, or that's, that's the bet that, that I'm making, but also the local Indian market. When you think about all of the growth in India as like the know, of the major, you know, GDP economies is the fastest growing. And when you think about what's happening geopolitically around the world with things happening in China and a lot of production because of, because of the issues with China, a lot of production is shifting to India and because of, of the other stuff happening with India and the massive growth of the middle class in India, you've got like, you know, two huge kind of tailwinds that are building dramatic opportunity. And I think that's the thing that I would hope that members of your audience think about is that right now is not the time to be lazy. Right now, with all of the stuff happening for India, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity to really have a op have that chance for opportunity to build skill, to build wealth, to actually be able to do something very, you know, huge. And, you know, I, I think what... I would hope a lot of your, a lot of the people in your audience realize is that right here, right now is a very rare opportunity. There are going to be people who take advantage of that opportunity and build dramatic significance, influence, wealth, skills, things like that. And the people who are like, ah, you know what? I'm just going to, I'm just going to go nine to five right now. While all of the trends are like creating all this massive opportunity and you're just ignoring it, man, that, that would be such a bummer when like, I'm, 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 I'm telling you like, and I'm in India, right? I I'm there. I, and, and there's so many people who are just ignoring it. Eh, you know, eh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's this growth in India happening. Yeah, whatever. You know, <laughs> it's just like, come on guys, wake up, wake up guys. This, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Grab it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, that's a very interesting point that you make because uh, you know the point of our connect was essentially that uh, one small post that you did in the Bangalore Elite Group. Uh, the question uh, that you asked that you know what is the studio or a single game title that can essentially grab that billion dollar mark, uh, right? So what are your views and what are your personal predictions? Some of the games that you might think might be in that race to actually hit the billion dollar mark because we've seen that happening in the West quite a few times. We've seen the likes of Grand Theft yeah. Auto 5 and Red Dead 2 uh, reaching that billion dollar mark. So what, according to you, can be that single uh, game title that can clock in a billion dollars in revenue? Well, I mean, right now, it's clearly, I mean, if you look at the current state of the Indian market, it's clearly FPS, right? And and I, I know BG Mai just got um, reapproved for the Indian market. We know mm -hmm. that PUBG, Green of Free Fire, these games have made Okay, so it's not well known. We know in, in terms of like if 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 you are close to the Indian market, we know that there that the the revenue being reported out of India is dramatically underreported. And there's this is an opportunity also because there's so many arrogant Western guys who are like, ah, oh, India, whatever, you know, yeah, that that's not big. And and the data services have dramatically underreported 
the amount of revenue and the growth in India. But I do think that, so, so not, not everyone knows, but I'm, t- I'm telling you guys, the amount of revenue being generated by these games in India right now is order of magnitude, at least an order of magnitude higher than what people think. And maybe a couple orders of magnitude higher than what some of these data services are reporting out of India. And this goes to the, the the trends that I talked about, right? This middle class growing and the more that it grows. And if you see like the, the growth and like the, the revenue being generated out of India, it's massive. So right now it is FPS and people know it, you know, everyone, you know, you, you go around India, everyone's playing Free Fire or, or you know, these, these kind of games on, on their phones right now, whatever they're able to access right now. But I do think that other genres will bloom in India. I, I feel like RPG is going to be big. I feel like, you know, I, I mean, obviously Ludo has always been big locally. And when, when you look at like Gameshian's Ludo King, obviously when it does rank highly on worldwide charts, it's almost all from India revenue, right? And so that should be a hit. Guys, wake up, you know, like the world that just Ludo is helping, you know, Ludo King um, chart globally in terms of revenue and like when you think about um, other genres, I, I do think for, for me, I, I would start looking at like RPG and, and, and you know, like, you know, don't, don't ask me the, the foreign guy, I mean, you know, like I think you, Nikhil and other people who are part of the Indian game development ecosystem should have a much better understanding and should be able to really think about, you know, what would players in India be looking for from a genre perspective or from a different kind of game experience. And I think the the ones that figure it out are the ones who will become the big new players. Like the next Hoyoverse, I mean, I'm I'm hoping that, that, that we build a big company out of India, but I also think the world is infinite. And I would really encourage other members of your audience to try and figure this out because the next big Hoyoverse, Riot, Activision, Blizzard, I think can absolutely come from India. Yeah. And, you know, if, if any, and I'm, I'm telling you, like, um, you know, uh, I just hope people realize that and take that opportunity right now because it's here and it's not going to last forever. Yeah. And plus the fact that, you know, there's a lot of opportunities popping up, like very recently last week, uh, and this is relative in terms of time, uh, we are recording this on the 19th of May. So last week, uh, mm-hmm. Sony announced their India Hero project, which is also a great uh, step in the right direction for Indian developers to cash in on that opportunity. Uh, they've been successful yeah. in China uh, with the China Hero project. Genshin Impact came out of it. So what are your thoughts on uh, that project? And do you think uh, like we'll see a lot of growth opportunities, not just from the mobile side, but also from the hardcore PC and console development side? So two questions over here. One, what are your thoughts on Sony's India Hero project? Second part is, uh, do you uh, think that platforms will see a huge shift because right now majority of the developers are focusing on mobile but we also have select right. few studios uh, like the likes of nodding head <laughs> and uh, others who are also yeah. concentrating on the pc and console side so how do you see that panning out yeah so first of all you know um huge props to sony i think they're doing the right thing i, I think that their view of india is right that investing in india right now is absolutely amazing to see. And I do think that, you know, betting on the Indian game development ecosystem is a good move. Uh, one of the things, though, I, I think uh, just, just just keeping things a little bit honest and real, I, I do think that uh, when we look at the Indian local market, I do think um, right now that the PC and console side of the Indian market does not seem to be that big. So um, kind of like the opportunity I see is more for an Indian game development team be able to gain the expertise and, you know, using things like the Sony Hero Project or whatever to, to address the global audience rather than the local Indian market or, or like HD platforms, at least right now for, for the near term future. Now, hopefully that the, the HD market becomes bigger and, and more sizable in, in the medium term to longer term future for, for India. But I would say that what I would hope to see are Indian developers that are able to build expertise and to build for the global market on the HD side, rather than uh, specifically trying to address the local market, which I think might be a little bit more limited. But uh, you know, some of the names that you mentioned, I really wish them the best, and I hope they have success. And I do think like building some of the skills now will will serve them in the future. Um, one of the other things that I do 
I am a little bit concerned about though, is that um, as far as, you know, so, so I meet with a number of game studios in India and I am concerned about a little bit of the technical capability. I think that's one thing that we're going to have to address is for a lot of the Indian game develop developers. I do think that they need to build a stronger foundation. And so, so in, in the game, like, look, I, I'm not, I'm not saying like, there are a lot of incredible engineers in India, but a lot of them also leave for other countries. Look, I'm here in Silicon Valley. The smartest guys I know are all India. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? But in India, in gaming, from a technical engineering perspective, and I, I think if you're betting uh, more on HD and more on engines like Unreal in the future, like having that really hardcore technical depth and understanding, having strong math, logic, engineering, that I think, um, I hope people in your audience don't, you know, I mean, like, don't, don't, you can't just rely on blueprints. Okay. Like, like get, get that technical understanding and foundation underneath you so that we can have really strong, like unreal C plus plus teams to address that opportunity. We're not there yet in India. And that's again, I, I would strongly urge people in your audience to think about this is the time right here, right now. I will commit myself to becoming strong technically and being and trying to get a team of, of people who are strong technically so that we can go after, we can compete against Hoyoverse, we can keep compete against Black Science, we can, you know, um, we can compete against all these other companies globally. Um, but I do think that we're not there yet. And I do think that is going to be a limiting factor for India to compete globally on the HD side. Fair enough, fair enough. I think that's a very balanced perspective on uh, this. I uh, would also, you know, running my own company, I would agree with you that in terms of C++ talent, uh, even our company faces uh, challenges, you know, because we also have a project that is currently under development in Unreal. So I would certainly agree with you on that part. But now let's digress a bit and let's talk about your company, Leela Games. Like, how sure. what was okay. the what was the inspiration behind starting this company? What is what what is the story behind the name Leela Games? Uh, over to you. Like, you know, what what's your story and sure. uh, what are the challenges that you're facing while running this company? Yeah. So I, I think I mentioned before that you know, as an old guy trying to find meaning, I wanted to do something meaningful, right? And so, for me, I think that there's an opportunity to help unlock human potential. I think that, um, and that's kind of the mission of our company is like, how do we create masters? How do we create people who are going to be the best? And, you know, we're not a company for everyone, right? There, there are other companies and, and, you know, I mean, I've talked about this before on other podcasts and things like that, but I think what we want to do is we want to present a choice where, you know, certain there's companies like Zynga India, which is all about work-life balance and things like that. I think that's awesome. Great. If that's your choice, I think that's awesome. And I know we we get a lot of hate because we're like the hardcore, you know, trying to like try, trying to like build masters. It's not a nine to five job, right? It's like, how do you become the best? It requires some effort. But we want to present that choice to some people too. Is like if you want, we're, we're we are going to be a little bit harsh in terms of who, you know, who we hire. And when you get here, we're going to be hard in terms of like keeping our expectations and standards high, because again, this is a rare opportunity in, in the world right now in life, right? So, but um, what I wanted to do is I wanted to create a company that helps people unlock their potential. How do we get somebody dramatically better? And how do we change people, which is very, very difficult. And we're not perfect at it yet, but we're trying because, you know, one thing to think about is if you were to think about like a like a two-dimensional graph with time on the x-axis and rate of change on the y-axis. When you think of technology, technology changes exponentially. People often don't change or are flat. So one of the things we want to try to do is how do we increase, how do we get that, how do we shift the curve up? How do we change people so that in this world where there is opportunity, you can grab it. And I, I do think one of the things that's really misunderstood or not well understood is that right now the world is undergoing change. We are becoming more global. There are people in India who might make, I don't know, as, as a starting engineer, that, I mean, I've, I've seen salaries for a bunch of people. Like you might make six lakhs today, but what if you can make six crores by becoming amazing right and now that's that's a huge jump but 
you know, I, I I've got friends that make that much, you know, like I the 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 thing is is that anyway, I, I'm kind of digressing a little bit too much, but like, you know, our objective ultimately is to see if we can push the envelope on human development and potential and to provide an alternative where, you know, whereas some companies offer work-life balance, we're trying to offer, how do you become the best? How do we create the best people that learn the fastest that improve the most? And again, I wanna be very clear, you know, in some areas we're doing great, in some areas we're really, really not doing great, but we're trying. In terms of the name, the name comes from, there, there, was, a, um, th there was a composer who lived in Boston uh, Olivier Messiaen, something like that, but he wrote a symphony called Taranga Lila, and Taranga Lila is based upon the the the, the you know the, um, the 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 Sanskrit and the Hindu words. Um, uh, is you know Lila means you know means love means divine play. Taranga means speed, time, things of that nature, and so my co-founder Paul. He was in Boston. Um, he went to that symphony, and that 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 symphony really impacted him deeply. And so, when we were thinking about names, you know, we thought about um, the, the the meaning behind Lila, divine play, the the concept of love, and we thought that was appropriate for what we're trying to do. So that our our name comes from that symphony, but and it just turns out that it's it, you know there's also an Indian connection there. That's a really beautiful story behind that, and I really uh, like the inspiration of the name as well. Uh, which brings me to my last question, uh, Joseph. I think you you've got some amazing experience in the space, and you've had a, a lot of uh, you know jobs that you worked at, which has eventually led you to starting your own company. So, what would be an advice to someone who would be in your shoes, who is probably in their uh, early twenties and they want to uh, tap their way into the games industry? What would be your suggestion, or uh, maybe a, an inspiration for them uh, to make their way into this industry and what kind of road uh, map should one follow in order to maybe make their next game or maybe crack their way into a job or whatever, like basically just make their way into the game center? Yeah, so I, I, a few things come to mind. I think, first of all, I think that people should really try to understand what they want, right? And so, like, do you want to become a great engineer or a great product manager? Or, and, and you know, I, I think... Whatever your choice is in terms of what you want, maybe you want work-life balance. Uh, maybe you want to work in the U.S. for Riot. What, whatever it is, like try to understand what it is that you really, really want out of your life, first of all. And then second, be real with yourself because I cannot tell you how many people are like, okay, I want to be the best. I want to be the greatest game designer in the world. And oh, it's um, it's five o'clock. Bye, guys. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, there, there's like this fantasy that you can, I, and I don't know where it comes from, but especially this younger generation, it's like, I can be the best in the world, and I, I don't need to like work hard for it. That's a fantasy. That's not that it's not real. So first of all, you know, understand what do you want from your life, and two, be real with yourself. What is it going to take to get there, right? And then third. I would say based upon what you want out of your life, then I do think company and people matter. What company is going to help get you there, right? What, and especially like who your, who's, who will your manager be? Who is going to help you um, learn the skills that you need to get there? And also don't just rely on other people. Like we have a lot of, you know, and look, I, I don't want to like um, be negative on some folks, but there's some folks who are like, okay, I'm here. Tell me what to do, you know, um, you know, instruct, I'm a robot. Tell me, it's like, have some self-initiative. If you want to become the best, sure, your company, your manager, you know, they're going to be able to help you out in some ways, but there's also going to have to be some self-direction. You're also going to have to think about, okay, for what I want, how do I get there? What skills do I need? What, who do I need to meet? Um, how can I build relationships with those people? And I, I will say that, look, I mean, we're living in a global world now. And so some of the, there, there's some people with dreams of working at like, whether it's Riot or Blizzard or companies like that, it's actually not that hard. <laughs> like I'm telling you, if you have the skills, it's easy, right? Uh, so, so just get there in terms of the skills, because that's the thing that is really the, the limiting factor um, with 
a lot of um, with a lot of people, it's just like the, all of these companies are looking for really hard skills. And for people with those skills, if you have them, you can get those, these jobs that you want. You can kind of build the kind of career that you want for yourself, but you know, it does take commitment and does take sacrifice. And I would also say, just think more about the local Indian market, because again, this is a rare moment in time and the people, you know, there are going to be people who, you know, 20 years from now, 30 years from now, look back and be like, ah, you know, that time when the Indian market was exploding and I wish I would have done something. There's going to be 99% of your audience is going to be that person. Ah, I, I wish I would have done what Nikhil did. Ah, ah, you know, you know what I'm saying? Regret sucks, guys. Re regret is like one of the worst feelings that you can have and you don't want to have regret. That's an extremely powerful message, Joseph. Uh, thank you very much for coming on to my channel and taking your time from your busy, busy schedule. I'm pretty sure uh, that this interview will uh, serve useful for that 1% of audience that gets motivated uh, to not have any kind of regret. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, so if you like this interview, press the like button and follow Joseph on all his social media channels. He's also available, actively available on what all platforms. Can you just give a shout out? I'll mention all those in the description. Uh, I mean, I'm on I'm on LinkedIn. I um I post on Twitter, but don't watch Twitter. Or, or sorry, no, no. I, I I post on Instagram, but don't don't really watch much on Instagram. And I read Twitter, but I don't really post much on Twitter. So, but yeah, I'm I'm on all those. I, I can send you some some links if you want to include them. Awesome, awesome. So guys, all the links are in the description. Check out uh, Joseph's work and check out Leela Games as well. And uh, Joseph, thank you very much. And uh, with that, we'll end no this problem. interview. Thank you.